there viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel we've got us a oh eight or nine ish kia sedona uh the money lights on the abs and brake lighter also on uh the guy said he checked it out it has a p0501 i believe it was which is vehicle speed sensor code uh so we're gonna check that out see what it is see if it just has uh you know a bad speed sensor or you know what the heck's going on with it and take it from there so i've got the altel plugged in here we will let it I'm gonna exile last car is working. I forgot to do that. I'm gonna take let it find uh, the VIN number and then we're just gonna do an all system scan on it, see who's talking, who's not. Sometimes modules will tell on other modules. Uh, so let's see what this thing ends up being here. I think it's a 2009. 2009. We're right here in good old America. USA 09 Sedona, it's got the big 3.8. So we'll let that load up and then we will diagnose and then we will do an auto scan and sometimes this takes a while so I'll let it sit here and do its thing. Well here's the results. I'm trying to get you guys out of the glare. Not real good at that. So we got engine, trainee, airbag, instrument panel, TPMS, immobilizer, front area module. Looks like we have I don't see, what don't I see, the ABS. Yeah, we don't see anything with the brakes here. We don't see any ABS. Let's, um, let's look at the report. So let's see, active in history 501. Uh-oh, that's a bad one. U, P for powertrain, U is for UART, in case you didn't know that. Uh, so then what, that is, where are we at here? That is the engine. So we have our 501, like you stated, uh, and then this U0001 transmission looks like the same thing. And then this is the airbag. Bunch of history codes. Instrument panel. Has some CAN communication problems going on there. I don't want to not get too sidetracked there. Some history codes in the TPMS. A whole bunch of history codes. All right, so those are all history codes, but active codes, we have definitely some communication issues. It's odd, the battery voltage. What is the battery voltage? 12.65, almost perfect. Can time out between smart key module and driver's door module. And the assist door module. But it is super interesting that you know the engine lights on, ABS and track lights on. I assume the engine gets its vehicle speed data from the ABS module. We'll have to check into that. We're not going to get super sidetracked with other stuff, but we're going to take them back out. We want to make sure that the scan tool has the ability to read ABS, and it does, ABS stability track. I assume it's going to come up with a no communication. So if that's the case, we're going to have to look at, you know, look at that independently to see why, you know, how come, why doesn't our ABS communicate? You know, is module bad? Is it, you know, broken wire? I don't even know what kind of network these things run on. Show up my doors? Yeah, it's beautiful out. It's like the end of November. Yeah, but it's like, I think the same temperature outside as it is in here. Okay. It's really nice. What's up? You got some mail for me? Is that even on? It is. <laughs> of course it is. Um, I do. Yep. Sweet. Packages. Okay. And this is what we have, folks. Failure to communicate. Ooh, that's a big failure. You should always communicate. Oh, I know these things. I could write the book on communication. Oh, yeah. Can we leave that here? Yes, please. I'm going to go help Josh here for a minute. I'm going to get my hands dirty. Do some torch work. So we know, before we get too complicated with it, I printed out the diagram for the ABS module. Because it appears to be what we can't talk to. And obviously, that's going to set codes with, you know, with our computer 
uh, not getting a speed signal, you know, we can't communicate with it. It looks like we can communicate with, oh, I don't know how many modules, what, 12 modules. I didn't go through and count them all, but um, what I want to do is I see all of the fuses that, you know, that it takes to operate this. And I look here and I see our ABS module has two full-time powers from a 40 and a 20 amp. And this here has, it looks like, uh, ABS-1 and ABS-2, so a 40 and a 20. And they are, should be this one here. And it appears to be intact. And the 20, which is this one here right next to the 30, also appears to be intact. Sometimes these JK's fuses are a little tricky to see because they'll pop right on the edge. They look okay. So, you know, we could always, you know, pull them out also and verify that they have power. But we should have some kind of ignition source. So we've got two powers, a ground, a bunch of sensors. Here we go. There's ignition right there. That's a green wire that goes over to this diagram, number seven. That feeds the yaw rate sensor. Steering angle sensor, and that's a uh, seven and a half amp fuse behind left side of dash. Now, did could we communicate with the steering angle sensor? That is on the CAN data bus, and I don't see that on here. So let's see if it's an optional unit. We might only be able to talk to it through the ABS. Um, and stability track. So that's that's possibly that's possibly it. I don't see it on here as an option. Sliding doors, either that or you know the Altel can't talk to it. So anyhow, just a thought there. Let's go in. ABS fuse seven and a half amp. Let's go check that. Let's get some. Shed some lead on this. So, ow! Son of a... This thing says fuse. <laughs> we'll use that for our first clue. A uh, whole bunch of fuse. Oh boy. Looks like we have some additional wiring back here. I see a wire hanging right there. Some kind of bare wire. Oh, that's handy. I dare not look. I don't see an aftermarket key fob. Uh, in either case here, this says uh, start power accessory ABS airbag ABS that goes like that ABS seven and a half amp so fifteen seven five seven five seven five let's go to that one there let me find something shiny hold on we're just gonna have a little close moment there let's just check a fuse any fuse. Okay, our test light works, and we are the second one in. Seven and a half there. Eh. Well, lucky, lucky. We've got a blown fuse. Oh, well, that's handy. Dang, I hate blown fuses. Why? Why do I hate blown fuses? Because you wonder what blew the fuse. So let's see here. We're going to pop that out. We'll have a look at it in the light. And it's smoked. So I've got a 5 amp circuit breaker here. I'm going to plug that in in place of it to see if we get big sparks. I don't hear any sizzling. So we'll stick that in the hole. Now we should have power on both sides. We do. This is only 5 amps, so that would blow. Now, what we need to do is shut the key off. So that should be a key on power only. Yeah, and it is. So turn the key back on. Power on both sides. Let's go see if we can talk to it. So I'm just letting it run an auto scan. We can see we have ABS now. What do we have? We had 12. Did I say 12? I think we had 12 modules before. I'll let it finish doing its thing here. I see it showed some codes in it, so that's interesting. 
the other interesting thing is that power, now we're gonna have to look at power distribution, it comes down, it goes to the front area module, and then it feeds steering wheel control or the uh, steering angle sensor. It also feeds the yaw rate sensor. We know it comes over, feeds the ABS. Um, however, this is incomplete because it has a dotted line around it. So this front area module is incomplete. I don't know what else it, you know, what else this thing feeds. Seven and a half amp can't feed much. Maybe I'll wait for this to get done doing its thing and we'll see, you know, we'll see what we see. And then we'll have to look at power distribution and see what else that feeds. What's up, Mrs. O? Your lunch is ready. Ooh, what'd you make me? I made this new recipe. Oh, let's go look. Let's go have a little gander. Let's go look. I'll follow you. Like something new. But yeah. I'm not going to You got some fancy hair today. <laughs> Your new kitchen. Wow, that beats the heck out of the hot plate, don't it? That is. Big time. It smells fishy. There's All right. no fish. Wow, really? No. Nope. I think that's your burgery smell. Oh, this looks like some oniony, green beany, oniony stuff. Yeah, it's a green bean casserole, but it's like homemade stuff. Ooh. No cans. And uh, what's this? Oh, this is the food my food eats. Yeah, your food's over um, at oh. the computer desk. Let's go have a look. Yeah. Oh, you ain't there, Wolfie. You waiting for me to eat? Huh? No, she's waiting for you to share what you're going to eat. Let's see. Oh, we have some venison bacon burger. Some green stuff. Mm -hmm. More green stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the venison burger Mrs. O made this year from our fresh venison. Cut it about 60-40 with bacon. It's kind of irresistible now. What's yeah. better than bacon? The answer is... More bacon. All right, well, let me go shut off my stuff up here. I'll be right back, okay. all right? It's hot, right. but fine to hot. It's hot, like my wife. Mm -hmm. Like my husband. Yeah, that's right. All right, good job. We'll be back. Twelve. <laughs> we have something that... Uh, didn't I tell you we had 12 before? How can we have the ABS and still have 12? What do I know? I almost want to pull that fuse back out and scan it. Uh, left front, vehicle speed range performance, brake switch, circuit error. Okay, those are something to keep in mind. Um, Live data. We should be able to read steering wheel input, I'm thinking. Steering angle, perhaps. And so there's steering angle, there's our yaw rate. So those are working, or appear to be. There's yaw, there's steering angle, fam, front area module. Anyhow, well, before we get to out of control here. I'm gonna go eat some lunch while it's still hot. I am curious to know if, <coughs> excuse me, if we should, you know, record, you know, save our codes where they're at, record them, and then clear all the codes because we don't know what's, you know, how long this stuff's been in here. I'm just wondering if all these codes in here went inactive. No, they still all show active, okay. Well, lunch is over. Now I did pull up a power distribution diagram for us and it shows everything that that fuse runs. So here's our internal fuse at uh, ABS 7.5. It comes down, goes to a junction, uh, ABS ESC module. So same same module, ABS module, yaw rate sensor, steering angle sensor, and then it goes to 
uh, pin 15 of the multi-purpose check connector. So, that is this little guy right here. And I looked at a diagram, pin 15 should be the third one in. So I'm gonna open up our bag of tricks. See if we can find a pin to go in here. There's one. And we'll stick that in our test light. And this will help us, help aid us in our diagnosis, I think. You know, we'll have, we'll know when our fuse blows. Now, kind of set that there. Let me turn the key on, that should light up, technically. lights up. I'm going to take our fuse back out. That should go out. And it does. So we're nowhere on the right hole. So we'll use that. I will put a buzzer on our circuit breaker inside. So if we start, you know, playing with those jiggly bits and something blows the fuse, we'll both be able to see it and we'll hear it. And uh, we'll come up with a plan. First thing I want to do, get my lift arm on the right. I want to take a look because we've seen, or I'd seen, what appears to be some fancy wiring under here. I'm going to take and stuff my head up under the dash here and see what, what's what. Make sure there's just not a bunch of something funky going on under here before we get super far. Stick our circuit breaker out of the way. So after a little bit of investigation, it appears that Best Try got under the dash and threw up all over and cut open the wiring harness, of course, to add the quality aftermarket remote starter, which is conveniently zip tied under the dash. However, this is our steering angle sensor. And this is what I was concerned about looking at. And the wires come down, and of course it's in the harness that they knifed open. Uh, I did some looking in there and I don't see where, I'm trying not to move too much. I don't see where it's rubbed on anything. And, uh, you know, I did some looking up under here and of course you guys can't see much but i don't see you know despite the hack job wiring and all this speaker wire and extra stuff that's run i don't see short of tapping into the ignition and the security and whatnot that they've done anything other than you know cut open a bunch of harnesses but i don't see where anything has rubbed and shorted here now i did go under the dash close this a little bit. I came out here and of course it also runs to the ABS module which is down here and I see it had some new brake lines on it and I wiggled that harness as much as I could as far as getting my hand in there and our light remained on. Now I want to pick it up in the air and just kind of do some visual inspection see if we see anything see if we can see some more of that harness for the ABS. Um, I'd really like to find something. All right, folks, I have been all over this thing, front to back, top to bottom. I've sustained injury on my hand. I pulled off the trim panel there to get to the all rate sensor and uh, Best Try has a big rat nest of wires shoved under there. And I pulled that out and I followed the wires for the uh, yaw rate sensor and you know, I could see the green wire and didn't see anything and wiggled and tapped on that sensor. Doubled before I put this stuff back on the dash. Uh, took another look under there. Didn't see, you know, didn't really see anything, uh, you know, alarming. I could not, could not get the circuit breaker to blow. Couldn't get the light to flicker. Nothing. So I have to do what I have to do. I'm way too deep into this thing. Uh, I'm already upside down in it which sucks, but I've given it the best shot that I could to try to find the short. Um, I've wiggled the heck out of everything, uh, looked, went over that whole harness for the ABS with a mirror to see if there's brackets on it, see if anything looks out of place. Didn't see any evidence of collision damage underneath it. And also we have to bear in mind that our wire runs up to uh, our diagnostic port here under the hood. So I inspected that wiring where it comes down Followed that into its harnesses to try to see where it goes. Uh, looked up um, on the computer. I looked up the wiring diagram or the wiring harness layout to see, like, wow, well, yeah, does it go through that fender? Does it look like it's been hit? I'm just, I'm at the end of my chain right now. 
So we're going to take this thing for a rip. Uh, I'm doing an auto scan on it. I want to make sure, see how many, you know, I had some stuff unplugged. Make sure I didn't generate any codes that need to be repaired. I did save the original data. I'm going to clear it out. And then uh, we're going for a ride. <laughs> And if it screws up, I'm going to have some ABS data up here on the screen. One thing I was curious about is, you know, does that power feed feed the wheel speed sensors by any chance? Okay, so our light just came on. All I was doing is steering the wheel. All we did is make it around the parking lot. Okay, let me see where the codes are set. The brake ABS, ESC, off, all that stuff just came on. Now it's back off. That's interesting. I wonder, was it on because I was going into live data, perhaps? So I access the ABS module. I back back out. The lights are still on. Now the light, okay, the lights are off right now. Let me just make sure I'm going to access the ABS module. Yep, as soon as I access the ABS module, all the lights turn on. Okay, so that's me causing that. All right, let me get some data up on the screen. So that's interesting. Some of the Chryslers do that too. If you're accessing the ABS module while you're driving the vehicle, all the lights come on. Uh, what I was, I think what I was saying is, I was curious to know if, if the wheel speed sensors utilize that power uh, they are active wheel speed sensors in this car, which require power. And I see some wires dangling down for the left front wheel. Looks like somebody was in that area. Um, wiggle, pull, pry there, nothing. I see both rear wheel speed sensor wires were broke off the backing plate and just kind of dangling. Uh, again, not rubbed through on anything. So what we'll do is we'll come out, do some ABS stops. jiggle it over some jiggly stuff and other than that I have to let it go folks um, I hate doing that and I know in the comments there's going to be the well you do know that fuses wear out from thermal cycling well that may be true uh, I've been doing this a lot of years and I don't see fuses come in that are thermal cycled and just plain and simply wore out uh, I would assume at some point all your fuses in the fuse box would wear out if that's the case Anytime I see a fuse that gets thermal cycled and wore out, well, that's because the power side of it is dead shorted against the ground. Whether it's a failed component, rubbed through wire, I don't see thermal cycled fuses just wearing out. Not saying that it doesn't, but we just don't really see it much. Now let's hit some jiggly stuff here. side of the car we still are reading good wheel speed signal we'll go down here and we'll do some ABS stops with it get the pump the cycle that guy's hood's open maybe we should go follow him yourself for impact. ABS stop. I think it just skidded the wheels. Maybe the ABS doesn't function when we're plugged into it. Let's try that again. Loose gravel stop number two. Yeah, we definitely skid. Yeah, it just skids. Let me, uh, let me back that out of here. 
That way the ABS becomes active again. Let me move this. Got my old kitchen aid on the ground. There we go. Lay down the old kitchen aid. Okay, ABS light is now off. I'm surprised it allows us to do a burnout. Let's do another ABS stop on loose gravel. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, maybe it has to be a higher rate of speed, which we're not going to do. Um, but if we go back here and have a look, see. Each time we did an ABS stop, we locked up the wheels. Uh, perhaps because we're under 15 miles an hour. Okay, the traction light did flash right there, so that tells me the traction portion of it does work. Very interesting. Wish we had some snow. It's like the end of November and it's near 50 degrees outside. It's pretty warm, I know that. Just moving the tilt column up and down. A lot of wires there. Um, Well, I'm going to turn around. I'm way too deep into it. I'm going to call it quits. ABS stop. Number three. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we just had to be doing like 30. ABS does work. Not every day you see a horse parked downtown. I'm go in here. They used to have some good potholes in the parking lot here. Uh, the jerk came through and fixed them all. That's all the snow we have left. This looks like a dirt pile. Folks, that's it. Uh, there's really nothing more I can do. Uh, I feel that I've gone on and beyond. My call of duty, if I had one, 
uh, to figure out what's going on with this. You know, we've done our due diligence. Um, I can't recreate something. I can't recreate. How's that for something deep for you? We've given it our best shot, as they say. Looked at the power distribution diagram. <clears throat> of course, this is after we found, <clears throat> you know, the cause of the no communication, which is the blown fuse. We look at that, we see what components run it. Uh, steering angle sensor, yaw rate sensor, the diagnostic connector into the hood, the ABS. And we go and try to visually inspect those. You know, we see, you know, a whole bunch of stuff in there, you know, aftermarket wiring and cut harnesses. And before you just go rip all that out, you take and, um, you know, have a look. You know, did they cut any of the wiring? Stuff like that. What's up, Mrs. O? trying to do a sign off. Oh, am I interrupting? Yep. It's not my fault, it's the customers. Who is it? Um, Use code words. What's their name rhyme with? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Uh, well, the wife's name rhymes with the husband's name. Okay. And the husband's name is Dan. Oh, and yeah. And they got a ticket. Ooh, for a headlight? Inspection that Ooh. was due in September. Well, he usually comes in for his once a year lube oil filter and inspection. And he wants to know if you can do it tomorrow at 9.30. Tomorrow at 9.30 on the Impala? Mm-hmm. I'm doing pretty good, aren't I, for guessing? You are. Hundreds of customers, I figured it out. You're so smart. No, you had good clues. Um, um, I don't know. There's nothing yeah, at 9.30. Yeah, do it. Do so. it then. Do okay. it. He's probably going to drop it off anyways, right? No, they have a hair appointment. Ooh, got a hair appointment. What's yeah, tomorrow? Wednesday? Oh, we're right Tons of th doctor's appointment because Correct. she's having surgery next week. All right. Right before they Thanksgiving. Ooh, look at this. <laughs> Death, darkness, <laughs> no parents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah, good luck in there. Good luck. All right, let me put this back. Uh, as I was stating before Mrs. O came out, that you know we've done the best we could we found the components that possibly could be at fault and or the harness is going to them we checked them out we wiggled we pulled we prayed over it and that's all you can do we have to put in the new fuse give it back to the customer tell them what we've done and hopefully they're accepting of it and understanding um and i know like i say a lot of folks think you know blown fuse well it's just a blown fuse well fuses always blow for a reason I'm not happy with this job. Uh, I know the car is still broke. Will it ever come back? I don't know, maybe, a uh, regular customer. So if it does, you guys will see it again. I think perhaps my next approach um, is I'm gonna show the customer where the fuse is and show them the appropriate fuse to use. If they, you know, let's say for example, like it blows and they put one in it and bang, it blows again. Now we're golden. You know, now we have the problem, you know, we, we can find it. If they put it in and let's say two months goes by and it comes back, uh, you know, it blows again at that point. That's that's tricky um, because let's say this is only happening once a year, you know, every even shorter period of time, every couple of weeks, that's going to be very difficult to trace down. Uh, difficult, borderline, impossible. I don't want to say impossible, but my approach would be, uh, let's say it was blowing like once a day, something like that. You remember on the diagram, they all went to a junction and all four leads came out of that. What I would do is I would gather up two of those leads. I'd put them on one amp clamp and the other two leads on another amp clamp and I would go drive it and see if you can narrow it down. You can at least cut the system in half at that point and see which two of those four leads, you know, has the big current draw on it. And then at that point, once you narrow it down to those two, then you take your two amp clamps and hook it around the two leads individually. And then, you know, assuming it's still blowing periodically in a you know time frame in which you can drive it, then you could say, you know, it's on this lead. Now you've got it narrowed down to a single wire or, or a single component. And then at that point, I would, you know, if I didn't see it, I would likely just unplug that component, whether it be a steering angle sensor, yaw rate sensor, and then, you know, or ABS, and then go drive it and see, you know, if it still blows, boom, you know, now we have a wiring issue. If it doesn't, now we have a component problem or some other feed out of that component. So you can kind of see how that uh, potentially could snowball into something bigger, I guess. Anyhow, that's a lot of freaking rambling. 
Why don't you guys ramble on down to that comment box. Leave your questions, comments, criticisms, concerns down there. Subscribe or ring that bell. And just remember, viewers, if I can't find a short, maybe you can. Thanks for watching. Now what? I have to get you chitlins. Who's answering the phone? Uh, nobody right now. Awesome. It's your job. Good luck. Thanks.